I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer checking in with you this evening and let's talk about what is really top of mind this time of year and that is thunderstorms and we have had our fair share lately of course some of the big concerns we think about with thunderstorms here is going to be number one tornadoes and then we think about damaging winds those are winds that can be 60 miles an hour or greater bring down trees do roof damage hail is another big one in terms of roof damage and car damage and then we also have something that's not even used to determine if the storm is severe or not, and that is lightning. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But when we're looking out and we're seeing the clouds move in, we're noticing the sky changing, you might see some different types of cloud formation. Some that may, well, have you wondering, what is that? And what's the significance of that kind of cloud? Well, our meteorologist Cruz Medina has a little bit more on a common thunderstorm cloud that we see. When storms roll through, some clouds are more scary looking than others. Shelf clouds like the one you're seeing here from Murfreesboro yesterday are scary looking clouds and it's a good idea to head indoors if you see one. But there are definitely some misperceptions surrounding shelf clouds. So for storms to form, there must be upward motion of air in the atmosphere. As the storm grows from its updraft or strong rising air, rain and sometimes hail eventually fall out. So while precipitation is falling out of the storm, an intense downward motion of wind, known as a downdraft, spreads out over the land. Winds in the downdraft can be strong to even destructive. And as the rain-cooled downdraft spreads out over the land, the warm, moist air that was at the surface begins to rise. As the air is forced upward, it cools and condenses on the front side of the storm, creating the shelf cloud. The simultaneous upward and downward motions that you're seeing here keep the shelf cloud intact as the thunderstorm continues to move along. So once the shelf cloud is over you, the winds will pick up, the temperature will drop quickly due to rain-cooled air, and heavy rain typically follows shortly after. So if you see a shelf cloud moving in your direction, expect rain and strong winds to accompany the storm as it moves over you. While they're pretty to look at, shelf clouds are better to watch from inside to avoid getting struck by lightning. Meteorologist Cruz Medina, WSMV4. All right, and being talking about being struck by lightning, let's talk a little bit more about lightning. As a matter of fact, the storms that we've had the past several nights have definitely had their fair share of lightning. And I've got a view of some of the lightning that we've seen. This picture was actually taken in Tennessee about 60 miles away from the storm. And Mary Ann said she couldn't hear a thing, but she could definitely see the sky light up in the distance. Now, a lot of times we call that heat lightning, and it really isn't a danger to you when it's that far away. But take a look at this particular picture here. This is gonna be a very different one. This one shows a thunderstone cloud. If I can get it to come up, that was happening as a lot of folks were gathered down at Nissan Stadium. And that is when the Taylor Swift concert was going on. It's worth waiting for you. Take a look at this. Wow. You see she's on the monitor there and then look in the distance that lightning strike. That's why that there was a shelter in place during that concert or before that concert got started because of the fear of so many people in that outdoor venue that might be susceptible to being struck by lightning. But obviously there was still lightning in the area when she was on the stage and Thanks to the, you can see the credit there from Liz Gall from their Instagram account. Pretty cool shot, but very terrifying in many respects because of so many folks being out there in that stadium exposed. So just a good time to remind you, anytime that you can hear thunder, you are close enough to that thunderstorm to be struck by lightning. So anytime you hear thunder, head inside. And here's a saying I always tell kids when I'm out talking to school groups, when thunder roars, go indoors. An easy one to remember because lightning is really an underestimated killer. I mean, it does a lot of damage, can cause fires, can do a lot of tree damage, but it definitely can also be a killer as well. So much so that here are some of the big activities where folks may result in deaths and one of those is fishing i mean any kind of outdoor activity for sure folks at the beach camping farming ranching boating motorcycle riding even on an atv and also social gatherings where folks are outside and you've got thunderstorms in the area 
And another one on that list, and of course those numbers indicating the numbers of deaths associated with these activities, is walking to and from home. Construction activities, you can imagine folks out building houses on top of the roofs. Soccer, out playing. I mean, you don't want to be the tallest thing out in the field, right? Because lightning tends to strike tall things first. And then we're also looking at yard work and roofing as well as golf. And you see that severe thunderstorm warning pop up there, kind of an indicator of what we would see during a severe thunderstorm. So those are some of the things to keep in mind whenever we do have thunderstorms across the area. And look at this. These are the fatalities that have happened. So far this year, there have been two fatalities, folks struck by lightning. And, you know, unfortunately, I have a feeling we'll be adding many more to that before we're totally done. And those two, one was in Pennsylvania and the other was in Florida. So just keep that in mind uh, this time of year when we have so many thunderstorms across the area that even though lightning is not considered a criteria to say if a thunderstorm is severe, it certainly, um, it, it certainly can be very dangerous in its own right. So glad you joined me this evening. I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer at WSMV4.